In this class, we will learn correlations. Correlations describe relationship between two variables. Here are the learning objectives for today. First, we will learn how to construct and interpret scatter plots. Second, we will learn the properties of a correlation, the direction, the strengths, and the form of a correlation. Third, we will learn how to compute covariance. Fourth, we will compute and interpret the Pearson correlation coefficient by hand. Finally, we will differentiate between correlation and causation. Let's look at a scatter plot. Scatter plot shows us a relationship between two variables. Here we have two variables. One is hours studied, second is a student's exam grade. We can put hours studied on the x-axis and the exam grade on the y-axis. Then we can plot the x variable against the y variable. So for the first student, student A studied 30 hours and received 88. Therefore, we find out 30 on the x-axis and 88 on the y-axis. Then the red dot presents student A's score. Student B studied 5 hours and received 65. 5 hours on x-axis, 65 on y-axis, and the green dot presents person B's data. Person C studied 25 hours, received 88, that's purple. Person D studied 15 hours and received 73. Has dark purple. Then person E, the orange one, studied 15 hours and received 65. These five dots presents the scatter plot based on our studied and exam grade. Then we can draw a line summarize these scatter plots. When we describe if a two variables are correlated, we need to first describe the direction of a correlation. A positive a correlation means that one, one variable increases, the other variable also increases. For example, the more hours I studied, the better grade I will receive. A negative correlation refers to one one variable increases, but the other variable decreases, such as the number of beer you had the night before midterm and your midterm grade. This scatter plot shows the negative correlation between beers drunk and the grade. Again, we can use a line to summarize this scatter plot. When x-axis goes up, y-axis goes down. The second property is the form of a correlation. A lot of times we can use straight lines to summarize the shape of a scatter plot, and these are called a linear correlation. Sometimes there are trends among the scatter plots, but we can only use nonlinear lines or curves to describe the shape of the scatter plot. Therefore, this is called nonlinear correlation between x and y. For our class, we only focus on linear correlations. Finally, we need to describe the strengths of a correlation. The strengths of a correlation is indicated by how spread out the dots are around the line. For example, these scatter plots presents the correlation between one twin's IQ and another twin's IQ. They are strongly correlated because the dots are very closely um, scattered around the line. 
The second figure presents a correlation between parents' IQ and children's IQ. They are still positive correlated, but as you can see, the dots are a little um, spread out comparing to the first figure. The last figure presents a relationship between foster parents' IQ and foster children's IQ. They are positive correlated, but the um, dots are very much scattered around. Therefore, the strengths of the correlation um, moved from stronger to weaker from the left to right figures. If two variables are perfectly correlated, then the lines are sitting on the, uh, the dots are sitting on the line. So one variable increase one unit, then another variable also increase a unit. Sometimes there's no correlation between two variables and the scatter uh, the dots are everywhere, such as the correlation between shoe size and one's IQ. There's no correlation. And when um, the dots sitting on the line in the negative direction, this means a perfect negative correlation. That is, when x variable decreases one unit, then y variable also decreases one unit. We can compute Pearson correlation coefficient to indicate the strength of a correlation. Let's first learn some notations. When we have population data, um, we will using Greek letter rho to indicate population correlation coefficient. When we have sample data, we will use little r to indicate sample correlation coefficient. The property of the correlation coefficients include first, the um, number of the correlation coefficient range from negative one to positive one. If two variables are positively, um, perfectly positively correlated, r equals to positive one. If there is no correlation, r is zero. If the two variables are perfectly negatively correlated, then r equals to negative one. Therefore, r has a range. If you um, computed an r of 1.5, something is wrong. r has to range between negative one to positive one. Here we have our previous example. One twin's IQ is strongly positively related to another twin's IQ. R is 0.75. Parents' IQ is positively, moderately positively related to children's IQ. R is 0.50. Finally, foster parents' IQ is weakly positively related to foster children's IQ. R is 0.27. Then when the correlation is negative, it could be strongly negatively correlated, such as negative 0.99, moderately negative correlated, such as negative 0.7, and weakly negative related, such as negative 0.3. Now let's learn how to compute the relationship between two variables. X variable is our study and Y variable exam grade. Here we have five students. To examining how our study is related to exam grade, we should first compute the covariance between x and y. Covariance means the degree 
the extent to which two variables vary together. One change, another one also changes. Therefore, it is called covary. Covariance is computed as um, x minus the mean of x multiply y minus the mean of y. And we do this for each student. Then we add the five students together. Um, for example, for the first student, um, the student studied 25 hours and received 88. Therefore, the student studied more hours than the average x minus x bar, then received also better than the average y minus y bar. So if a student studied more hours, so x minus x bar is a big number, then also received better scores, y minus y bar is also a big number, then the multiplication is a big number, meaning x goes up, y also goes up. On the opposite, if a student studied a very small number, such as 5 hours, and received a poor score, such as 65, then x minus x bar is a big score but it's negative. y minus y bar is also in big size but it's negative. Then these two multiply together, it become positive but a big score. It means that when a student didn't study much and also received very poor score, then x, y also covary together. Okay. Therefore, conceptually, this formula tells us that if a student studied a very small amount of time and received a low score, um, at the same time, a student studied a lot of hours and received higher score. Under this, both of these conditions, x minus x bar multiply y minus y bar will be big. So covariance between x and y will be big. Therefore, when we have higher covariance than this formula, the result based on this formula will be big, meaning x covary with y. Let's see how to compute a covariance between our studied and exam grade. Uh, for the first student, studied 30 hours and received 88. First, we need to find out the mean of x. It is 18. Then we find out the mean of y, which is 75.8. Then for each student, we subtract 18 from individual score. So 30 minus 18 is 12. 5 minus 18 is negative 13. 25 minus 18 is 7. 15 minus 18 is 7. And 15, sorry, 15 minus 18 is negative 3. Then negative 3. Then for y, we do the same. We subtract y bar from each individual y. So we have 88 minus 75.8, we have 12.2. 65 minus 75.8, we have negative 10.8. Then we have 12.2, negative 2.8, and negative 10.8. Then we multiply x minus x bar, then y minus y bar, that is the last column. Then we add the five scores in the last column together. We have um, 413. This 413 has a new name. It is called the sum of the product because 
Each score in column 5 is a product score, 146.4, 140.4, etc. So 413 is called sum of the product. Then covariance equals to sum of product divided by sample size minus 1, which is 4. So covariance in our example is 103.25. The co covariance can be used to measure a correlation between two variables. However, the problem with a covariance is that it is affected by the standard deviation of the x variable and the y variable. If the standard deviation of the x distribution is big, or if sd of the y distribution is big, then covariance tend to be big. Therefore, it is not the most accurate estimation of the correlation between x and y. Um, the solution is to compute the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient r. Simply, we just uh, adjust the co covariance by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. That is the r r equals to covariance of x, y divided by standard deviation of x multiplied standard deviation of y. We all remember how to compute the standard deviation of x. For our study, first we find out the mean of x. Then we find out the deviation scores. Then we square each deviation scores to get rid of the negative signs. We add them together to get a sum of the squares. Then we divide the sum of the squares by sample size minus 1. So we have 95 as the variance of x. Then the standard deviation for x is um, square root of 95, which is 9.75. So we compute the standard deviation of y. y bar is 75.8 deviation scores. Then we square each deviation score. We add them up to get a sum of the squares for y. We divide sum of the squares of y by 4. We will have 134.7 as the variance of y. We take the square root of 134.7. Uh, we will have 11.61. That is the standard deviation of y. Now we have both the um, numerator and the denominators. We can compute the correlation coefficient. It is 103.25 divided by 9.75 multiply 11.60. It is 0 0.91. Therefore, our study and exam grade are positively related to each other. When we uh, run correlation coefficients, we always get a p-value, the um, significance level. So how to test the significance of r of 91.91? Again, we form our steps. First, we, form, we follow our steps. First, we form the research hypothesis. The research hypothesis is population correlation does not equal to zero. Then the null hypothesis is rho equals to zero. It is t test. t test, the degree of freedom equals to sample size minus the number of predictors or number of x minus one. So it is five minus one minus one, which is three. t observed score equals to Correlation coefficient multiply sample size minus 1 minus 1, 
divided by 1 minus r square. So it is 0.91 multiply square root of 3 divided by square root of 1 minus 0.91 square. T of z square is 3.80. And the t-critical score is positive or negative 3.18. Therefore, we reject the no hypothesis. Sometimes in some computer software output, you will see this adjusted R. What is this adjusted R? When we use our sample to estimate a population correlation coefficient, we may have some biased estimation, especially when sample size is small. Therefore, when sample size is small or big, the computer software will compute the adjusted correlation coefficient, and on the output, it is indicated as RADG adjusted. By hand, you can use this formula to compute the adjusted R. So it is 1 minus, uh, the nominator is 1 minus R square, multiply n minus 1, divided by n minus 2. In our example, R adjusted score is 0.48. Because our sample size is very small, only 5, therefore our adjusted score is very much different from the R score produced by our sample. When sample size is big, such as over 200, there would be a minor difference between our adjusted score and the R value. That's why when we run correlation coefficients, we prefer sample size to be big so that we make a more accurate prediction of the population correlations. If we are good on R, now we can work on in-class exercise one. Compute the correlation coefficient between X and Y.